speaker is Fan Wang from Zhao Tong University in Xi'an, China, speaking on cortical parcellation maps for the dynamic developing baby brain. Um, good afternoon, everyone, dear my audience. Um, my name is Fan Wang from uh, Xi'an Zhao Tong University. Uh, for those who might be interested in China and Xi'an, where the city of the Terracotta Warriors comes from. So welcome to visit Xi'an. Um, so uh, I will uh, directly continue the... Thank you. Okay, so uh, I will go directly with my presentation. First, I will introduce some about the background of the infant cortical parcellation. Um, we know that infant baby brain, baby brain is going like growing very fast, and this kind of fast is different in two aspects. We say that the uh, the velocity is drastic, and later the developmental pattern is dynamic in a temporal way, and. Uh, uh, this period is critical for the understanding of underlying brain organization and functions. And also, this, this provides a vital window for observing the brain developing vivo using current imaging techniques such as the structural fMRI, uh, structural MRI, fMRI, and uh, DRMI, et cetera. So if we come back to the world of parcellation, what is parcellation and uh, uh, why it is so important? Uh, we say that, um, uh, cortical parcellation, it groups vertices in a meaningful way under certain definition. And it helps help us to localize cortical areas and define network nodes. And also it help, helps us to do like intersubject or intrasubject or interstatic comparisons. And meanwhile, at the same time, it, it reduces the data dimensionality, so hence the data complexity. Uh, and I here listed some of the uh, well-known uh, well known, but not all of them, some cortical parcellation maps, including the uh, so called gyro sonoma morphology, uh, according to the brain morphology, and also the according to the genetic, uh, genetic correlation and function, function, and then multimodal parcellation and diffusion MR. So there are different um, parcellations built. But we know that all these parcellations, they are um, built by adult data and they are built for adults. And we noticed that we would say that adult parcellation are not very suitable for infants according to their differences in brain size, shapes, and functions. But we do want to study the infant brain as there provides a lot of opportunities as it's a unique window for observing the brain growth. And uh, this kind of growth is de determined by uh, our underlying brain microstructures, and it's reflected by the growth patterns that we can observe from the, uh, from the imaging techniques. And this kind of growth patterns, it also reflects the cortical organizations. But at the same time, infant brain, uh, and analyzing the infant brain brings enormous technical challenges, including the dynamic and drastic brain development. So the same subject may appear to be very different at the different age. And also we have large intersubject variations so, and by considering the longitudinal development. So here in this talk, I will introduce three of our previous work on the cortical parcellations. And uh, for the pre-processing pre part, um, we use the UNC uh, infant brain processing pipeline so that uh, before that we can attract, extract the brain cortex, we have to undergo several steps. And uh, afterward, we have the brain cortex and some morph morphological features and as well as the um, functional signals on the cortex. Um, the first, the, in the first work, we actually focused on the cortical sickness, and uh, there are two aspects. The first aspect is the trajectory of the cortical sickness. We want to see that how it's growing, and it has been a long time that researchers notice there has to be a peak somewhere during the brain development, and it was first thought to be somewhere at, like at the teenager. And later, this age was moved to like maybe eight years of, eight years of age. And uh, afterward, we found that this age, this peak age is very likely to be between one and two years of the age, so, uh, so at the infancy. 
Um, and also evidence showed that after three years of age, no peak was observed. Uh, that is for the trajectory. And also there was a spatial patterning. So uh, researchers trying to delineate the spatial patterning according to the uh, growing pattern, like the, the cubic pattern, the quadratic pattern, or the linear pattern. So two or three patterns on the, cortical, on the cortex, but no more detailed patterns. So uh, uh, to this aim to the spatial and temporal development, we leveraged a data set of 43 term-born infants, which they, are, they have seven scheduled scans bef uh, before the two years of age. Of course, we have missing scans, so among them, four, more than four, uh, 40 infants have more than four or five scans, um, structural scans uh, during, uh, during the infancy. And for the method, we leveraged a non-active matrix factorization method. So uh, this method actually aims to extract uh, what we say co-developing vertices. So if we look at the various tiny small brands uh, here on the right, we can see that there are some bright colors on each brand. And all the vertices on these kind of bright colors, we say they are co-developing vertices because they are growing up and growing down. So increasing and decreasing at a simultaneously in a similar pattern. So this is what we call a similar development, developmental pattern. So we want to use non non-active matrix factorization to extract this kind of development pa developmental pattern. So as it, this is a clustering based method, so we of course need to determine a cluster number. And our criteria tell, told us that two, six, and 17 seem to be good numbers. So uh, we, uh, use, uh, we use 17 over here to see uh, the, 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 the growth pattern. And we are able to find 17 regions where um, the, 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 the groups vertexes into areas, where each region groups grows in a different way. For example, like here, purple represents the auditory and uh, red represents visual. And we can see that they are developing in different patterns. And overall, we would say that the brain, uh, the brain cortical sickness peaks at the age of about uh, 14 years of months, not age, months. So, uh, but um, during the infancy, actually there are some regions that they, they attend to the peak, but some of the regions does not, some do not. So, uh, uh, well, we have a more detailed patterns uh, of development in the paper, but this, we just show some typical regions. And after studying the cortical sickness, we want to take a look at more cortical areas to see that if we increase, this, uh, if we increase the number of features, can we obtain more regions? So uh, we developed a method uh, called the multi-view non-active matrix factorization to try to capture co-developing patterns of vertices which uh, are in multiple attribute, attributes but not in only in one attributes. And of course, we need to evaluate the methods and determine the cluster numbers. And at the end, we found that for, by using cortical uh, surface area and cortical thickness, so two, the combination of two cortical uh, attributes, we found 25 regions. But the problem is that if we want to get more regions by increasing the number of clusters or increasing the number of features, we're not able to uh, obtain more, a better parcellation. Uh, we have to keep these numbers to be smaller or around 20 areas. Otherwise, it will re result in fragments. Uh, so if we increase the cluster number. So uh, due to this reason, we have to turn our eyes into the gradient-based appro approach. And we found that uh, this kind of approach can capture subtle, subtle changes in functional connectivity and also results in fine grained parcellation maps. And here I show uh, several parcellation maps that they are given by the gradient-based approaches, including the Gordon, Gordon functional atlas, and also uh, uh, at 2017, the, the Schaeffer local global parcellation that they generate different parcellation numbers according to a local and global uh, regularization and, uh, and so on. So uh, the overall pipeline of uh, performing this kind of gradient-based approach is actually in the second panel in the green, where after the first panel of pre-processing, we are able to extract signals of functional connectivities, and we basically compute two times of connectivities. And for previous methods, they average this kind of uh, high-order functional connectivity matrix across the cohort and try to uh, uh, compute the gradient uh, the gradient uh, on the cortex and then do a watershed segmentation on each gradient map. And uh, 
So, uh, so afterward, so on the very left of the second panel, we're able to see uh, this, this is a kind of a boundary probability map or what we call a gradient density map. So on this map, it actually represents the probability of each vertex of being a boundary at different correlation maps. Um, so, uh, but we think differently because they do like a average across, co across the group and afterward to generate only one gradient density map across the cohort. But we want to generate, generate this for each individual. But of course this takes quite a long time, but the result is quite good. So if we take a look at the left here, we show that it's a gradient density map that we have, op that we have obtained on different subjects, so three random subjects. And if we, uh, if we repeat the results of previous results, we found that um, by using, the, by using the, uh, the, the group average and then compute a gradient density map or boundary probability map for each group, uh, it actually uh, results in the panel A, in the column A, where we can see the pattern is very clear, but we do not see very small, tiny regions. But what we think is that we want to average this map of different subjects to see if we can see, we can have like better, more detailed patterns. So we average this across subjects. But we found that this pattern seems that we seems to have some detailed patterns, but we do not really uh, can observe because it's very uh, kind of noisy. So we later think that, okay, so we can probably do a functional registration because we previously, we only performed a structural registri registration. So we use uh, this feature as a, uh, as, a, uh, as a feature for registration for another round of registration. So previously we performed a structural registration and uh, here we want to perform another round of functional registration. So after the, re the registration, it's uh, the figure on the right um, the column C, where we can see that, okay, we then have a very clear pattern and we do see that there are very tiny regions that we can recognize the, from this map. So our postulation is then generated from uh, uh, the, the finally registered uh, results. And we actually released the two, uh, two version of the postulation. The one, uh, the one version is what we call the age independent postulation, where we sim simply average the gradient density or boundary probability map across all cohorts, all infants. And also we generate, generated another version, where is, which is called the age related postulation, uh, where we average the only, only average the infants within the same age so that at different age we have different postulations. So we have this kind of two uh, alternative uh, postulations and I think one can choose according to, uh, according to how they need and how, they task, how their task is performed. Okay, so, um, oh, sorry, can I go back? Yes. Okay, so uh, we perform, this study is performed like in, uh, on the BCP cohort where we have like around 20 subject, uh, 200 subjects and they are scanned like two or three times and uh, with uh, fMRI, both structural and fMRIs. Um, and uh, after generating the postulation, we have, we of course did some uh, evaluation and here our colleague, Dr. Dan, who has helped us to evaluate our postulation with a downstream task where she uh, actually performed the infant identification, and she found that by increasing the postulation number, we can help significantly um, uh, increase the identification rate of her task. Um, so we also used our postulation to, uh, to see how the network is developing in infants because we know that the infant network is very different from the adults. And we do have observed that there are some tiny patterns that we believe can be only shown if we use this kind of fine grain postulation. So we, uh, we, encar we encourage everyone to try and use this kind of postulation. And I think that the idea is that to perform this kind of uh, 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 gradient density or boundary probability computation and then perform a round of functional registration will, which will be really helpful. Okay, so this is pretty much what I'm, uh, I'm, uh, pre uh, I'm presenting today. And uh, to, sum to summarize, we have presented the growth of cortical sickness and uh, how we perform the multi-view growth of the brain and then how we explore the high resolution infant postulation using the functional signals. 
Um, so we would like to say that the development is the key for all infant-related studies, and uh, it is juicy for this type of this type of uh, uh, research as it helps us to review what's underlying, uh, but it brings uh, but it brings enormous technical challenges. And uh, our method should always be tailored to consider this kind of development so that we will have a chance to review important findings. And uh, so that's it, and thanks for attending. We have time, we have time for a question, if there are any from the audience. If not, I wondered, could you yeah. say a little bit about uh, the, the functional parcellations? What kind of functional data was going into that? Um, well, for this study, we use the, uh, we use the pre-processed the functional signals, and we, we extract the, the signal on the cortex. But I think we also tried this kind of puzzle, this kind of uh, computation and registration on the adult data, and it works quite well, too. So is there task, is there task based functional? Oh, it's rest instead of functional. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. One more applause.